What's up everyone? Welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today we have the Apple Magic Mouse 2 and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use the Apple Magic Mouse 2 gestures, features and configure the settings. Let's get started. All right, so we've got Apple's Magic Mouse 2 all paired up with our device here. I'm gonna leave it sort of right here so that way you guys can see it clearly. I'm gonna use my trackpad to move around and then show you each gesture right on the mouse. We'll see how that works out for you. Let me know in the comments after the video if it was easy for you to understand or not. So first off, make sure you've got your Magic Mouse paired in the Bluetooth preferences here. If you haven't done so yet, look up the instructions that came with your mouse or just search it out online because in this video we're focused on the features, gestures, and the settings. So what we want to do first is open our system preferences here and you want to find the mouse option and then give that a quick click. It'll take you to your point and click and your more gestures tabs. Now these are all enabled for myself. You may notice that secondary click and smart zoom aren't. I enabled everything here so I can show you everything that this mouse can do. I suggest you do the same just for this video and then after the fact, go through these settings and configure them exactly how you would like to use your mouse. So what we'll do is we'll start by going through the point and click options. So we'll start with scroll direction being natural. So what that means is anytime you are on a website or a scrollable page, we're right here on my YouTube channel, that you're going to take one finger and you're going to scroll by either pulling upwards or downwards. And the natural scrolling direction meaning that I'm going to use my one finger and pull up and that's going to take me down screen. You can see one finger is taking me down the screen and if I give it a quick flick, it'll almost go all the way down. Same thing if we're going upwards and if you give it a quicker flip. The faster you go, the more fast it's going to scroll. Now, if you prefer to change that over, you just need to deselect it. And now it's going to work in the opposite way. So when you pull down, it's going to feel like you're going down screen and up, you're going up screen. So totally personal preference for yourself. I like it with the natural option. It's worked for me over the past few years. Next, we have the secondary click. And as I said, this may be disabled for you by default. I strongly recommend you turn it on by checking the box and then setting it to either click on the right side or the left side. I think it's best on the right side if you're right handed for sure. And what the secondary click, it's basically your right click with a magic mouse. So that means that whenever you do want to click on something, for example, let's just click on a link here. Um, let's go all the way to the bottom and we'll just right click on, let's say this video right here we can see that we have all of our right click options now available to us where we can open the link in a new tab, copy the link. Even if you highlight text, which is as simple as just taking your left finger, clicking and then dragging, you can then right click on that text, copy it, share it, and so on. So having the right click functionality is pretty important with any computer and any mouse, but with the Magic Mouse, that's how you enable it. So I strongly recommend you turn that on. And if you're left-handed, I believe that's why the left click would be the option for you and that would just basically turn your left click over to the right side. So keep that in mind as well. So the next option is smart zoom. This also was disabled by default. I turned it on and it's going to give you a quick way to zoom in on various things of the screen. So let's say the text is a little bit too small and you want to sort of zoom in on it. You're going to take one finger and you're going to double tap towards the middle. So locate what you're trying to zoom in on. So let's say it's these words right here. Take that one finger, double tap. It'll give you a quick smart zoom, which zooms right into the text, allowing you to see it very quickly. And you can zoom out just by double tapping. Once again, it'll take you back to the standard look. It's a pretty important feature. I didn't realize how useful it was until it was enabled, but uh, definitely consider enabling that if you want to use that feature. Now, the last option is the tracking speed and this one as well, pretty important. If you have it on super slow, you can see that I'm dragging this mouse all across my screen. It's barely moving, right? If I go to the fast side and I do that, I'm going all the way across the whole screen here with barely moving this mouse. So you want to find that sort of happy median for yourself. For me, it's always been a little bit past the midway mark. So right here, and that works best for me. Now at any time underneath, you can see your mouse battery level, the percentage, you can see this one's at 78% charges with the lightning cable. You also have your Bluetooth mouse options here, which will allow you to disconnect it and things like that. The more gestures tab will open that section and it's going to have the swipe between pages. So you can scroll left or right with one finger. 
You can also set it left or right with two fingers or to swipe with one or two fingers. The best option for me is one. It's just quicker. I'm used to it and it works pretty simple. So we're on our YouTube page here. Let's just say we went to home. We go to the home page on YouTube and we want to go back. We're going to take that one finger. And we're going to swipe back, swipe forward. So we're going to go back. We swipe this way. It takes us back to the page we were just at. We can also swipe back forward and it'll take us back to our main home page here. So you can swipe back and forth. It's almost like using a back button, but uh, you're using one finger, a one finger gesture, swiping this way or this way to go back or forward. So I like that feature as well. I use it a lot. If you find it starts to get in the way where you're kind of just scrolling along and you move the whole screen, then maybe think about swiping with two fingers. That way you don't have that issue. Now the next option is swipe between full screen applications. So we'll just open a couple of them here. We've got this uh, Apple TV application open. So we're going to take our two fingers this time and swipe on our mouse. There you go. And we can swipe back. And as long as you have multiple applications open in full screen, let's open the app store as well. And we'll full screen it and we'll just go across. You can see we can just scroll between all of them. And then finally, if you go all the way to the left side, it'll take you back to your main page with whatever you have open that's not in full screen. So you can always go back and forth. So another feature, I, so that's another feature I use quite a bit. Now mission control, as you can see from the little demonstration, basically opens up everything that you have open. Uh, that's not full screen. Everything that's full screen will be at the top. So from where we are right here, if we take two fingers, double tap on our mouse, just give it a quick double tap. You'll see we've got all of these sort of open windows here. So we've got our YouTube channel. We've got our settings at the top. You can see that we can navigate to our desktop. We can navigate over to our TV app and even the app store. And then on the right side here, we can even open up another desktop so we can access that as well. So totally up to you how you want to play with this. I don't use this very often at all. I should. It's really good for productivity and it's a really good feature. It's just not for me for whatever reason, but uh, it's there as well. So those are the settings that you can access in the system preferences once again and clicking on the mouse options. Now there are some other options that you can use with this magic mouse that weren't listed there. First off, if you ever lose your cursor, as you can see on screen here, it's just under my DHTV logo. What you can do with the mouse is just shake it and you can see that the cursor is going to get large. So that way you know exactly where you are, especially if you're using two screens. I find it very useful just to quickly find where the mouse is. There it is. Now we can go on with our navigation or what we're working on very useful and I hardly see anyone ever mention it. So keep that in mind if you have that issue. Quickly checking the percentage of your mouse battery is pretty important as well. So just click on this little Bluetooth option at the top and you'll be able to then just hover over your mouse options. It'll tell you the battery percentage right here. You can also disconnect it really quickly as well if you need to. And if we open up our system preferences once again and click on accessibility, there are some options here on the left side that you can play with in particular the pointer control. So the double click speed, you can speed it up or slow it down if you'd like. And I'd trend to leave it where it is here. It's just going to be how fast you can click it. So if you slow it right down and you need to double click on something. So for this, let's just go to our home page here. I'm just going to create a new folder to open a folder. It's double click. We've got it on slow. So I can really take a long time to click it. So like click, click, it still opens. Whereas if I have it on full fast, now if I click, click, it's not going to open. You're going to need to go really fast to open it. So keep it wherever you'd like. I don't mind it too much where it was. I'll leave it like that. The spring loading delay, I don't really touch this. It's basically going to use the slider to specify how long or how short an item has to be over a folder before the folder opens. I'm not even going to get into that. If you need it, you'll know. And then the option here is the ignore built in trackpad when mouse or wireless trackpad is present. So if you find yourself always moving back to the trackpad or you want to disable that trackpad when the mouse is connected, you can then just click on that option and that'll disable the trackpad anytime the mouse is connected. I don't really know why that would be an issue, but it is an option that's there. You can also click the mouse options here and configure the scrolling speed, which I already talked about earlier. 
and the scrolling with inertia. So basically with the inertia on, it's going to come to a gradual stop. So as you're scrolling, it's gradually gonna stop where you stop. If you turn it off, it's supposedly going to stop immediately. It's very apparent with the iPad keyboard and trackpad, you can really see it. It's tough to see it here, especially on camera, but that's the definition and that's what it does. So if you do want that on or off, you can enable it right here. And those are pretty much all of the options you have in the point and click settings. But that is pretty much everything you can do with this Apple Magic Mouse. If you have a tip or a trick that I didn't cover here, let us know in the comments below. It'll definitely help myself and everybody else out. And if you found this video helpful and the instructions easy to follow, let me know in the comments or provide me with some of your suggestions. I'm really trying to make these videos really easy to understand for beginners as well as useful for more advanced users. And uh, this was just one of the options where I keep the mouse down here, the computer here, record the screen and record the mouse, um, you know, live sort of as I go. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification box to be notified when I post new videos. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next one.